Well, hello everybody, welcome to the, to the MBS show holiday edition. Uh, well, uh, it's a bit strange today, uh, well, considering what we're reviewing, uh, no one's given me the charge to lead us forward in this one. So uh, let's uh, say hello to Norman Sanzo. Hello folks, I'm Norman Sanzo and this podcast is taken over by Jacob. Uh, no, in all honesty, um, it's nice being in the passenger seat for a bit and uh, Jacob wanted us to review this and here's the thing, uh, I've asked Jacob if there is an English for this and he said mm, technically no and doesn't know where to find it so I'm just going to hold back for a bit but this is very fun and interesting. And, of course, we cannot forget our uh, resident roosting pigeon, uh, Silverquill. Uh, and it seems fitting that my favorite Disney character is Donald Duck, so here we are. Well, uh, before we start, here's a uh, fun little, little trivia. Now, uh, this comic, uh, well, as, as uh, Norman mentioned earlier, uh, it was uh, released in my country, but uh, we couldn't really find if there's any uh, original, uh, well, release uh, in English. And so I basically had to translate uh, the Slovenian language in English for uh, them to read this. But here's the funny thing. Well, uh, let's just say that as a, as a kid, that was pretty much... Uh, people often called me Donald Duck. And I'll explain, <laughs> I'll explain why. Firstly, because... In Slovenian translation, uh, Donald Duck is translated Jak Adatsman. And basically, uh, Adatsman is Duck. And because my first name is Jak, uh, that's one uh, connection. And the second one is because as a kid I was really, really short-tempered. I see. So it kind of relates. In... Yeah, basically right. pretty much on this one. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, this time we're uh, we're reviewing uh, Disney comic, more specifically from Donald Duck. So uh, first impressions, uh, Norman. First, this one's on you. All right. Uh, honestly speaking, the, my first impressions was the translation is okay. Like it's how do I put this? It's not too foreign where uh, the structure is like, oh, uh, this is very s mm, stiff. It's It flows naturally. And at the same time, too, you did a good job. Oh, by the way, uh, Jacob translated the whole thing for us so we can read it in English. I, I think he mentioned that, but I just have to point out because that's one of the impressions, you know, like, oh, he did a really good job in the translation department. Yay, that's, that's awesome. Uh, the comic itself, it's fun. It's a fun read. And yeah, the ending. Mm. <laughs> what about you, Silver? Well, I have to be... Uh, yes, you did a wonderful job with the translation. So con congrats there. I find this all a bit weird because I'm used to Donald Duck j just being a barely understood ball of rage. This is much more articulate. Okay, Silver, I, I got you pointed that out because here's the thing. Um... There, there's uh, in the new DuckTales oh. uh, series, they, they pointed out like um, they, they, there was a scene where for the guys to understand Donald, uh, the smart duck, Gizmo, Beekman, Beek, Gizmo, uh, stuffed not. down a Gizmo. voice something, uh, gyro, uh, stuffed down a voice thing so that it will help him speak normally. And he's voiced by uh, the actor who played War Machine. Uh -huh. Remember? Uh, Donny, Don, 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 Don something. Don Cheeto, yes. So he's voiced by Don Cheeto in the cartoon. But in reality, Donald has been saying all these one-liners, these awesome uh, heroic phrases in the comics. Because... <laughs> We can understand Donald in the comic because we're reading his lines. <laughs> I am the storm. Have you been <laughs> yeah, yeah, have yeah. you been talking like that this entire time? <laughs> I just 
just love that little detail. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's all. That's all I got for right now. I mean, we'll we'll uh, we'll comment as the story unfolds. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, as for me, well, uh, I actually remembered uh, this comic specific, uh, specifically because I listened to the to a Christmas song that actually fits this. Can you guess which one? Oh, there's a there's a song for yeah. this. I'll be. I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me. No, not that one. Driving home for mm. Christmas. Mm, you, no, you've no. never heard of driving home for Christmas? Really? Mm, I'm not sure it's reached America. No, this or, this can't be <laughs> right. Hold on, Jacob. You have you also have to remember that uh, yeah. some Western traditions don't apply to me. <laughs> driving home driving for Christmas. Christmas. Here. Oh. Uh oh oh, I'm driving home from Christmas. Oh, who who sang this? Christy Ray? No, 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 no. I I say who sang this? Christy Ray, nineteen. I don't know. I mean, maybe uh, maybe Jacob did sing it back then. Jacob, have you been holding out on a music career from us? No. <laughs> you hesitated there for a minute. <laughs> People often say that I got the, I don't know, a good singing voice, but honestly, I can't really get myself to sing in public. Uh, we'll have that episode where we have to sing. <laughs> but anyway, right. carry on, man. So, uh, we got all of this out of the way, so let's get to the meat of the whole thing. Before that, before that, uh, if you're interested in reading the comic, oh man, how, oh, how yeah. do I even do you know this? Because what, no why don't you just, uh, proper... do you have any upload site where you can uh, put up uh, documents? I, I, I guess I can. I, I'll try and do something. I'll try and do something. So if you're interested in reading uh, this comic and Jacob's translation of it, uh, links below, I guess, because this is really fun. This is a fun read. So yeah, uh, go read it first before... Uh, what you call this listening to review? Welcome back. Hope you enjoy, uh, Jacob. So uh, we start with the Christmas test, and we start with the opening narration. How does Santa Claus know who was naughty and who was nice? And basically, here we see Donald Duck. He's uh, in the fire watch tower somewhere in the wilderness, and he's happy because uh, it's the twenty third of, of December. And he's about to go home for the holiday. And, well, as he's uh, whistling about, we see a pair of deers talking to one another. And, uh, well, uh, apparently Santa's involved in this, because, well, he know apparently Santa knows all too well that uh, Donald's really, uh, well, he lets bad temper get the better of him. But at times, he's got just really... Bad case of bad luck. So this, and so they came to <laughs> check on him to see what's gonna happen this year. And then we discovered that it's not actually the deers that are talking, but it's actually a pair of elves that are hiding in the saddlebags on the side of the deers using uh, cameras. This worries me because if Santa has this kind of tech. Just imagine what does he have now? Like this, this looks like a very old comic from the eighties or nineties. Just imagine what well, he has it's now. actually from ni- uh, from uh, New Year's Eve, uh, nineteen ninety nine. Oh, <laughs> oh no! It's it's worse now. Like just think of the smartphone. He's listening to us talk about him right now. Oh no, Santa! I'm I'm being a good boy. <laughs> Actually, I bet the elves have all been replaced with delivery drones. <laughs> With, with surveillance saddle equipment. <laughs> Norman, listen for a buzzing. Oh, man. I can't hear anything. <laughs> They've perfected the tech. <laughs> and, well, uh, they quickly sk- uh, skedaddle back into their elf mobile in order to tra- in, to- in order to trail Donald because he's about to leave because his replacement uh, arrived, old Bertie. And he's a bit, well, antsy because, well, uh, he was waiting for him for a long time and his turn was about to leave. And before he, uh, before Donald uh, reaches the car, 
Bertie tells him uh, if he runs out of gas that he should uh, find a canister uh, in the back. And unfortunately, Donald didn't hear that, and as he speeds off, the gas canister falls out of his back. That, that is unfortunate luck for Donald. But at the same time, too, why is the gas can canister not tied down or something like that? I mean, is it just me, or is this an occurrence that happens? Like, I feel like it should be tied down. It should, but perhaps old Bertie is a bit uh, forgetful. Well, he is old. <laughs> and then again, also, the roads are snowed in, so he was probably expected that he would drive slow. We should also explain why uh, he was a bit late to arrive on the site. But anyway, as Donald drives through the countryside to get to the nearest train station, as luck would have it, he runs out of gas. And because he didn't hear what Bertie was saying, he immediately blames him for not filling up the gas tank. Technically, that's true. Like, he came to the site. Like, you, you have to think about it. Like, okay, if he has an extra tank of gas, what's the range of the gas being full or not? Like, you have to ask yourself, how much gas does it take from point A to point B where he needs to have an extra gas of, uh, tank of gas just to at least not get stranded? Well, it is some backwater, so gets probably pretty far. But anyway, even though Donald would uh, very likely go back just to strangle him, he can't, doesn't have time for that because he was gonna be late for the, for the train. And so he decides to run for the next three kilometers. And he manages to get, back, manages to, get to the train station in the nick of time. And uh, as he's moving uh, to the train, he overhears one of the conductors saying that Donald... Uh, seats for the train to Duckburg are already sold out, but he already reserved in advance, and as once again luck would have it, he trips over a trunk and loses his uh, train ticket. He, he doesn't notice that, but still. He's too busy arguing with a guy who's pretty uncharitable himself. And also, if you think about it, why did he leave his luggage in the middle of the of the pathway I mean that's already a big no-no there like it's not even it's not even um, upright it's 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 kind of on the ground flattened and he's yeah the, the asshole is I, I have to say that he's at fault for uh, making Donald's trip and if there's a reason why he was and he was he put it over there somewhere in the middle of the street it's probably because he's waiting in the line I mean, here's the thing. Uh, I understand story needs to story, but at the same time too, if there's fragile things inside the bag, you want to keep it close to you so it's safe. And if Donald bumps into him and uh, tri uh, and trips on the luggage, it's Donald's fault. But this does it, <laughs> this scenario here doesn't show that. It shows the guy standing in front, leaving his bag at the uh, leaving his luggage at the back where people can trip over it. And yeah, uh, this guy is at fault. <laughs> yep. But anyway, Donald just spe and speeds off, manages to get on the train the last moment, and then discovers and realizes that the ticket fell out of his hands when he tripped earlier. And then panics when the conductor starts going about the tra trying to get people's tickets. Time for us to treat it to treat. And well, then he suddenly Donald suddenly realizes something. Well, when he was looking at the ticket earlier, before just before he tripped, he remembered that his seat was supposed to be number thirteen C. But when he gets to this past the seat number thirteen C, he suddenly realizes that sitting on it is the same jackass earlier uh, or whose trunk he fell. And he immediately accused him of thievery. Of course, the conductor immediately uh, intervened before <laughs> Donald managed just to choke the guy. And when they question Donald if he's got proof that this is his seat, well, yeah, he pretty much shot himself in the foot with this one because there's no way he was gonna prove it either way. And then he makes another strategic retreat to avoid the conductors and hides in the uh, luggage cart. 
And of course the <laughs> Yeah. And the others of course are trailing him this whole time. This is creepy. Why? You don't have small people trailing you all the time. Just somewhere out of the view. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? <laughs> These are agents double O Kane. The Kane stands for candy. Oh, God. Uh, Jacob, I'm a bit worried that you have little people following you. Well, you probably have to. <laughs> Please, Norman. Norman, we don't call them little people. We prefer to call them the vertically challenged. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> carrying on. Or if you prefer the height impaired. Ah, yes, yes. Or, uh, no, no, oh god. I would, well, I, I wanted to call them dwarfs <laughs> or gnomes, but I remember that D&D's changing their whole race into species. So that's, uh So, after spending a long night in the trunk, morning comes and unfortunately the train breaks down. And the conductors informed the passengers are gonna have to get uh, out on foot to get to their destination, and they unless they want to wait for the buses to come. And of course, the guy, the Don, accused of stealing his uh, seat, storms out, pissed off. And right at that moment, Donald opens the, his trunk, leaps out, and runs for it. <laughs> okay, that's that. That there's just a dick move. <laughs> Yeah, that pretty much was pretty much a dick move. And then not even trying to help the guy. I mean, I know he was an asshole and he had every right to be angry at him, but still. Well, that's what you get for stealing. That's pretty much his argument. Uh, yeah, to totally. And, well, as we continue, Donald gets to the rent-a-car shop where uh, all the uh, passengers that uh, got off the train and, get, and got there to get to their own destinations Donald asks the uh, the rental guy if there's any car left, and he said that they pretty much shout. And then Donald spots another car that's out in the parking space, and uh, he's informed that that's the prior transportation. But that doesn't make sense because apparently it's uh, well, apparently that's got supposed to be rentable, but uh, the rental guy makes excuses. And Donald begs him, but nothing helps. And then suddenly Donald notices that his rent-a-car shop is part of his uh, uncle's conglomerate. And he pulls the, uh, whatchamacallit, um... What's that word that's used to describe uh, nepotism? Nepotism. Nepotism. The wondrous new way to get around all your problems. I mean, if it works right, like, think about it. If... if, if if you have to pull some weight or or if you want to, if you need to drop a name drop to get where you need to get it's a way I, I'm not saying that you should do it but if you have to you have to you shouldn't have to be related to the owner to be able to get a uh, to get a car I mean that's just a bad situation but then everyone else you know, it's not even that you've done something to deserve it. You just happen to be related. That mostly just breeds resentment. Yeah, true. But at the same time, too, right? Like, uh, okay, I, I can get why Donald's pulling this card. I'm not 100% sure if he usually does this. From what I can tell, Donald doesn't really like to use his uncle's name because he wants to be independent of him. But Yeah, but he's desperate. Yeah, yeah. So he, he, this one, in this scenario, he thinks, okay... Uh, I have to do this because if I don't go back home, Uncle Donald will pull me out from the wheel. <laughs> oh, that'd be something. Uh, so, so that's my excuse. I'm not just sure if it's true or not. <laughs> so Donald drives off and is a final slap in the face to the guy who he accused of uh, stealing. He says, Merry Christmas, even if it is still my ticket. Because the guy is pretty much not going to get a car to get where he needs to go. He's more like... Um... Uh, Steve Martin in Planes, Trades, and Automobiles. <laughs> Christmas classic. Uh, Thanksgiving classic, actually. Ah. I think the only Thanksgiving classic. Funny that Thanksgiving is mentioned in this point. Because as Donald's driving home for Christmas, and, th and daydreaming about how, he's gonna, uh, how uh, things are going to be when he finally gets home, 
and suddenly a turkey hits his window, and he rolls off the road, and crashes into the frozen lake. Yeah, that that is just irresponsible of the guy. I mean, yeah, basically uh, a balloon guy from upstairs, uh, from uh, above him, uh, basically says that he had to lose X-ray because he ran out of basalt. So, well, he had to uh, do something to slow his descent. He just didn't expect that Donald was below. But, but at the same time, dude, this is just irresponsible. Like, Silver, back me up on this man. Yeah, I, I would say randomly throwing turkeys is not a uh, preferred flight. I'm pretty sure they covered that in flight school. You're supposed to start with the other passengers. You know, the real turkeys. <laughs> uh, but no, at the same time, too, like, if you do drop something like sandbags or whatever but it feels like what he's doing there is just really irresponsible like i i do not agree with this guy like he, he's an idiot well you're not far off he is well to put it lightly a bit slow <laughs> because this uh well first he uh, he asks donald if he wants to t- uh, lift wherever he needs and then he explains that apparently he just ran out of gas, and that's why he had to toss his mom's Christmas turkey out. And then so Donald spots another gas uh, tank that's not been used. And he goes, Oh, it was you this whole time, or did it just appear? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm guessing that the gas tank wasn't there. It's just the elves. I'm doubtful of it. I feel like the elves are that vindictive with Donald, and they just want to screw him over. <laughs> But they're only supposed to observe. They're the watcher. Oh, you, 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 you say that, but there, there's, there's one going AWOL. They're off the chain. <laughs> Anywho. So after that little uh, accident, the balloon man takes Donald in his homemade balloon, by the way. What? Homemade balloon? Really? Yeah, he made it himself. Oh god. So yeah, that's another reason for Donald's to be a bit antsy at this point, despite being just bombarded by a t- frozen turkey. <laughs> I just like how we didn't acknowledge the car getting wrecked. Like, yeah, oh no, poor car getting wrecked. Here's the thing, the car's a rental, and oh boy, Uncle Scrooge is going to be pissed. Are you kidding? Uncle Scrooge could probably buy 50 of those with just his pocket change. True, but Uncle Scrooge has always been known to, well, be you want something, you have to work for it. No, he, he's always been known for, if you want something, you have to work for it. I think it's free. Or that's new Scrooge. I don't know about old Scrooge. All right. So, they spent hours in the balloon. The elves are still trailing them. They finally uh, get to the city. The guy believes it's a duck bird, but as it turns out, it's actually new quack. And at this point, the balloon man runs out of gas, so uh, Donald jumps ship and uh, give him one last slap in the face to the guy who just brought him here because, well, he didn't really get that much closer. And as he reaches the first bus stop, well, the guy working there tells him that the last uh, bus for Dagbert leaves from the other station on the other side of town. So yeah, Donald's got really bad... Bad case of bad luck in in, in this story. And as he mo- as he's uh, going through the town, the well, he's running out of time and he can't even get a taxi to get him there. And all of a sudden, he spots a pogo stick stuck in the snow. And well, he doesn't see the owner around. He he decides to just uh, well, what is the word to Finders keepers? Well, yes, finders keepers, but uh, commandeer it? You know, honestly, Silver is riding a pogo stick any faster than running? Probably not. Actually, slower, I think. <laughs> oh, man. No, no, no. I, I believe uh, Donald here has been learning a lot from Uncle Scrooge, and using a pogo stick is faster. <laughs> Well, he's tired and he pretty much got uh, took out of the town at this point, so hey, anything's better than any alternative is better than wasting the energy when you know you're not gonna get there to your destination at this point. And after the little mishap where he crashes into the back of the bus, he finally gets on. <sighs> and this is where we get to that uh, point of the story. Donald's all cozy. 
goes in uh, in the bus. He's running home. Nothing can go wrong at this point. He thinks, and all of a sudden he gets woken by uh, by somebody, an old man in a coat with a large beard. <laughs> oh no! It's the IRS. <laughs> So yeah, basically the old man asked him if he's going home for Christmas. Donald said yes, and basically, well, the guy's a bit tenuous because he's gonna have to work on his own tonight. And well, he notices that Donald's a bit, uh, well, exhausted. And Donald pretty much confirms that when, well, he, he, he says that the guy probably wouldn't believe him, but he had to go through to be here to begin with. And then, uh, well, the old man says that uh, Christmas can be very hard for some people, and then he pulls up, well, a laptop. And then he shows the image of, well, old Bertie, and explains that, well, because Donald uh, decided not to work uh, in the watchtower during the holiday, he, uh, Bertie had to jump in in his, in his case. And, well, uh, because Bertie lives alone, uh, people often don't... Uh, well, they think they don't. he doesn't mind that, uh, that he would have to work on a day like this. But even though he has a family and he wanted to spend t- time with them for the holiday, he chose to sacrifice himself so that Don could go home and be with his family. And after that uh, car incident where he ran out of gas, uh, Donald called him an idiot. And then he moves on to the next picture and it shows Donald tripping. It explains that the train ticket that he held it was for the seat uh, 113C and not 13C. Basically, he accused that uh, guy who's been on his case like since, uh, since the moment he saw him. Well, he wrongly accused him of uh, the- uh, theory. And because he basically ne- uh, took the last car to, ta- uh, to go home. The guy now uh, ended up getting stuck somewhere in the snowstorm on the road that's never, not gonna take him home at all. And then he explains that the rental guy, the rental car shop, well, he was, uh, that car that he refuses to rent out, he was saving it for himself because his own car broke down in the morning. And, well, the pogo stick that Donald found. Well, apparently it belonged to some uh, some boy's father who bought him the pogo stick for as a Christmas present, and he dropped it somewhere on the way. But well, when he tried to get it back, Donald found it, and well, now now his boy's not gonna get uh, his Christmas present. And that um, balloon guy, the one that uh, Donald is insulted just before he left, well. He did all his, he could to get him as close as possible to Doug, uh, Doug Burke, and he wasn't even thankful for it. And as the two basically get off on the same bus station, well, basically the old bearded guy says, I know you had a lot of problems getting home, but did you not think of others who would have, also have them? And well, uh, Donald really doesn't have a uh, reply for that. And, uh, well, the guy only suggests that he knows that he's been doing it for the, uh, for, uh, well, for the right reasons, but uh, next year, the very least he could do is to be a bit more patient and, and not let uh, his anger get the better of him. And so he says goodbye to Donald and wishes him a Merry Christmas. And then, this is the... P- we see this picture. This is what this has been building uh, to, to the entire story. Basically, Donald's in front of his home. It's all decorated, bright. He knows his family is waiting in, inside. And he just stands there. He doesn't move. He can't move. He just can't go back home inside with his family and pretend that it's all hunky-dory, that everything's fine in the world, after he's just been revealed how many innocent people's uh, evenings he's ruined, just because he was so zealous to get be home with his family for Christmas. And at that point, basically, Donald runs after the old guy, 
questioning King how he can fix all of this. I don't know. This feels like Santa Claus is Donald Duck. This is your life, and it sucks. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I can totally agree with Santa Claus' interpretation here. I mean, basically, one old birdie Donald couldn't have known, and Donald's well within his rights to say, "I don't want to work on Christmas." Plus, he didn't even call Birdie an idiot to his face. That's more just Donald's own frustration. The guy who tripped Donald, uncharitable guy himself. Granted, I think Donald escalated the situation several times over. So there, definitely a problem. Unsaving businessman, I don't know if you can hold a car for yourself. I don't know what the company policy is. But these are a lot of things Donald just doesn't know about. He doesn't have that level of awareness that a spy network provides Santa, which really, really causes some trouble. So Santa's laying on the guilt pretty heavy here. If the goal is just have a, just try to be a little bit more patient, you don't have to blame him for all the woes. I mean, if any, half the woes that that Donald's suffered were circumstantial. And honestly, his, the difficulty inflicted is also circumstantial. Yep, yep. I, I agree with that, Silver. I mean, uh, anything more, Ted, before I continue? Nope. All right. Yeah, I have to agree with this one, man. Like... All of the things that we read through, okay, we 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 as the reader, we, we don't know, uh, Bertie, Ber Bertie, Bertie, old Bertie, yeah, Ber yeah Ber Bertie here, uh, didn't want to ha had a family to blah blah blah. I mean, it's kind of a job where, um, we we got no idea how long Donald spent, uh, doing this job without going home. Well, apparently it was weeks. Just weeks? Is he uh, is he a part time or what? <laughs> I wouldn't know. Donald goes to so many different jobs. To, like I don't know. Oh yeah, and I love at the beginning of the comics the elves wonder why he even took this job, and be like, guys, do you understand that sometimes you don't get to pick the job, the job picks you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I forget they have job security and only have to work one night a year. Oh, that's what you think. Like, we got no idea what uh, Santa asked him to do for the rest of the year, man. <laughs> Clean! Clean this place up! <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, like, like Silva mentioned, Donald doesn't know, uh, also us as the reader, we don't know who these guys are. Uh, f when we read through the comics, when we go through parts of the comics, we got no idea if Birdie really wants to be there or whatnot. Uh, we, we don't see him sighing over, oh boy, I wish I was at home with my family or whatnot. I mean, we really don't see that. And then with the bus, we, we see him trip over the businessman suitcase, which I already pointed out from the very beginning, which is careless of him. And then uh, with the car, like Silva mentioned, we got no idea the policy and whatnot, but still, if to to be honest, the guy could have just challenged him on. Okay, go call. Let's see what happens. He could have done that. Yeah, but again, the unsavory employee, unsavvy employee. <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is, challenge him on it and see if it's true. Uh, the worst thing that could happen is that well, you lo you lose a job on Christmas, and technically that's very bad image for Scrooge. So. You, you just get chew out or something like that. I mean, who knows, right? And for the father with the pogo stick, tough luck, man. Shit happens. And Santa laying on thick with the main, with the emotional damage here. Like, man, we, we don't know. He, okay, we, 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 we can already tell with the uh, spy network stuff is his Santa, but still, the the he's like silver mentioned he's guilt tripping Donald into what submission we we got no idea his game plan here. Well, maybe the two maybe change his way. But the thing is, from point A to B, Donald's being just Donald, and he didn't really hurt. Okay, maybe for the businessman, but in general, he didn't really do anything quote unquote wrong. Except for the car rental guy, I mean. 
and the guy that he left stranded somewhere in the snow. Partially blamed for taking the guy's stuff, but then what about the buses that were supposed to come and pick him up that afternoon? Technically, he missed it. Like, he missed the bus. Like, wait, bus? You're talking about the one with the pogo stick, right? No, I'm, I'm talking about the guy who tripped Donald and... Ah, maybe he couldn't wait. Yeah, but as it seems, well, just like Donald, he apparently couldn't wait. No, technically, in Donald's case, he cannot wait because he doesn't have a train ticket. <laughs> but for for the guy, oh, man, I, I understand, but it's, it's really annoying when you get info later on where, oh, I, I've been a dick. Ah, fudge. That's not... That's not, I, I don't feel good. Oh, man, I wish I could help them uh, with something. And this is what happens. Uh, old Man Crinkle here guilt trips Donald into trying to... Redeem him, himself? Kind of, yeah. Redeem himself and like, uh, please help. Uh, what can I do? What can I do? Oh, Ghost of Christmas, whatever. Please help me. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it feels... Personally, I just feel like this is unfair for Donald. Like, Donald didn't really... How do I put this? Donald didn't really... It was half bad luck and half of it was his own temper. Yeah, Mm. that's true. That that is true. But the bad luck, when you really look at it, is just his negligence, really. He could have just scrolled through easily if he didn't rush. So the moral of the story is don't rush into things. Be patient, listen to what people have to say, and everything will flow smoothly. Although I wonder what rushing would... uh, Well, I don't know how much that contributed to getting your car hit by a Christmas turkey. Oh no, uh, everything, uh, everything went downhill when he started rushing out from the cabin. Like, he rushed out, didn't really pay attention to what um, Birdie. Birdie had to say. And, like, if he just took his time, uh, talked to Birdie for a bit, and uh, listened to what Birdie had to say about the gas tank, he'll be fine. And if he didn't drive like a maniac, the gas tank wouldn't have popped out of the uh, back seat. Except that he only had about half an hour to get to the train station, so he had to drive like a maniac to get there. <laughs> See, the, the, there are some times where you really have to just bolt, and it's unfortunate. But hmm. life does not always allow us to be supremely cautious and have everything under control. Mm, yeah, I mean, we we can point to points. Sorry, we can point at uh, points in the comic where Donald should have do this, do that. For example, uh, with the train and his ticket and whatnot, he should have paid attention when he's walking. Like, come on here, I'm a walking here. Yeah, but he didn't. That's his fault. So yay, and then uh, him not checking the ticket before going into the train, his fault also. Uh, him causing a ruckus is also his fault. I mean, there's points in the comic where okay, we can point. Okay, this is Donald's fault. This is Donald's fault. This it's all Donald's fault. But at the same time, too, it, the poor guy doesn't really know. Well, by and large, I still feel that the guilt trip is unnecessary. I agree with that. So, so sorry, so, Jacob. We, we're bashing hard on your childhood comic. It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, uh, time passes on, and well, Don's family is getting pretty worried because they found his suitcase out uh, before um, before his house, and well, he hasn't turned up. And then they hear the the jingle, and they go out out to the house and they spot uh, Santa and Donald uh, dressed in his uh, uniform, thanking San- thanking him for uh, letting him come along and help out on things. And of course, Santa lets him go to be with his family now. And of course, Donald explains that first they found uh, a replacement for all, Ber- for all Bertie, so he could be with his family. Then they gave the guy that got stuck in the snow. They gave him a lift, as well as the guy that, uh, well, the the one that was left without a car. They uh, sent balloon man in the right direction so that he could be back with his mother. They got the a new pogo stick for the boy, 
that uh, lost it earlier. And of course, some other things. And, well, as they celebrate off, we see that the... Santa's two helpers that have been trailing Donald this whole time have taken Bertie's place in the Watchtower. You're right, Silver. Santa's a cruel... Um, mis- um, a cruel, cruel person. Even on the holidays, the elves need to work. Hey, but at least they got nice, nice hats. <laughs> oh, yeah. A nice hat will solve everything. <laughs> <laughs> and with this, the comic ends. So... Final verdict, Norman. Oh, uh, me. All right, cool. It's it's a very fun read. Like from start to finish, uh, I was fully invested. And great job on the translation. It was, it didn't really pull me out, and it got me in. So, uh, good job on that, uh, Jacob. Uh, golf clap for you. Thank you. Oh, but, that's the golf claps. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> The comic kind of pisses me off at the part where Santa came in, Donald Duck, you're an asshole for doing this, yeah. and like, oh god, like I, 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 mm, I, I, I know what's going on, but I really hate it. <laughs> but at the same time, too, it, it was a really good read, and having Donald kind of redeem himself at the end, there, it's yeah, it's okay. I, I wanted to crack a joke about the balloon guy. But do I forgot it. to kind of do it. But I'll just say it here. The balloon guy, yeah? yeah? He, he he created the balloon himself and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a beagle boy. And he's going to my beagle. Why? What? Why Why would you assume that? Yeah, so just take a look at him. He He's not that smart. He looks he looks like a beagle and just going to ma. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And... He doesn't know directions that well. Mm. All right, just to draw, uh, draw those uh, <laughs> things around his eyes, those masks. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I noticed it. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, but no, if it, uh, boy. <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, I, I highly enjoyed the comic. It was a good read. All right. Silver, you? I think anyone who has had to rush to travel on the holidays or try to make a connecting flight only for things to go wrong will see a bit of themselves in this comic. And I think it's very easy to empathize with Donald's frustration. Like I say, Santa lays it on pretty heavy, but it it is a testament to Donald's character that he wants to make things right. And that, well, they fix it all off page, but that's okay. But... uh, in terms of a moral patience, sure, but uh, you can't make yourself responsible for all the world's happiness. Otherwise, one, you'll very clearly fail, and two, you're going to wear yourself out. So good on Donald, but, but Santa, you've got to moderate your, your counseling. Not everyone has your ability to travel. What about you, Jacob? What about you? Like We haven't really asked you how you feel about this comic. Well, I, I don't know. This one just uh, stuck uh, stuck in my memory for for the last 20 years for some reason. Like, I, I don't know why. I, I know that now that you mentioned it, yeah, there are uh, a bit too much uh, guilt tripping on Donald. But well, you, despite all that, I, I still like the story all the same. We we never said that the story was bad. We we mentioned we mentioned that the story was enjoyable. It's just that the moral was hitting a bit too rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, well, still after all these years, uh, I still like this guy. And I can see why. I can see why. So, I guess we'll get to the end of the review. Yep, yep. And with that, I'll take over for the ending. Then, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. All righty then. So, uh, guys, I hope you appreciate the comic that uh, Jacob translated here. Uh, do send him a tweet or message on the um, comments below saying how much you enjoy and whatnot. I mean, he, he took his time, man. He took his time. How, how long did it take you to translate everything, man? Well, uh, the editing, the translation. Uh, last I checked, I think it was like something like six hours. 
six hours. <laughs> oh, wow. It takes a briefer man than me to do this. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, man. No problem. Maybe next time we can do something as well. But we'll see about that. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmsugmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on the twi Twitters, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, you can also do a search for Silver Quill after the fact. Uh, on YouTube, but if you only do after the fact, you may get a news program, which is, well, confusing. And you can find me at Equestria Daily uh, on Wednesdays when there's a new comic. I will have done my best to review it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Jacob, what about you? Well, you can find me on DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Tolka, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Term of Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the TalesOfTheAshes.com. All right, all right, go check it out, guys. And also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, to the radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyFlife.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MPS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I like thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, Myself Like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am Mr. Silver Quill. I'm a Jacob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya and happy holidays. Merry Christmas and adios. Merry Christmas and a happy new year, everybody. From the MBS show. I've been, for, for this whole time, I've been trying to remember uh, to say... Uh, Navidad. How how do you say that? Like I, I'm trying to Google it and I can't find it. Oh, Feliz Navidad. Yeah, that one. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. What does it mean? I wish you a merry Christmas. Wish you a merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. That's basically what it sings through the, uh, throughout the whole song, but in Spanish. <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> All right. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> Bye. 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 -bye.